Well, the Ethereum Shanghai upgrade has come and gone, and we have weathered the storm, and it's looking pretty positive. And I think that Ethereum has a lot of room to run all the way up to $3,000. We'll take a look at why, especially since everybody agrees that inflation is now dead. And what I'm talking about is there is a great website. I'll link in the description. It is token.unlocks.app. And today we're looking at April 13th, and we can just see how much Ethereum has actually been unlocked since the Shanghai upgrade has come into play. Now, this allows for people who have staked Ethereum all the way back in late 2020 to unlock their Ethereum and do whatever they want to do with it. Now, I need to make something crystal clear. Just because you are unlocking and transferring your Ethereum does not mean that people are selling. A lot of people would like to put their Ethereum into cold storage. They want to know exactly where it is and have control over it after losing control, essentially, for two years and locking it up. So that doesn't mean things are being sold and the price action is actually looking pretty good. The thing that is interesting to me, and of course on this website, you can see just how much is uh, the total pending withdrawal, the total amount that it has been confirmed or change of status to withdraw. The estimated withdrawal, uh, this is to use in the next 11 hours, you're looking at 68,000. And we can just see that the total pending withdrawal so far has been around $2 billion. Again, that hasn't all been sold, I'm sure, but uh, maybe there has been people who have sold it. What is interesting to me is the net staking balance. This is how much has been withdrawn over the time since the Shanghai hard fork. We're looking at 210,000 Ethereum has been withdrawn. In that same time, you've almost seen 100,000 deposited. What does that mean? That means that people have a lot of confidence in Ethereum. And if you have a, a staking balance of just around 116,000 negative, that's a pretty good time frame for what has been going on. And what does that mean? Well, it means Ethereum actually went up in price of 5% and has now breached $2,000. So where do we go from here? It's anybody's guess, but there was a, a great uh, data point for on-chain analysis and it takes a look at the average price distribution of ETH state, who is in money, who is not. And you can just see that uh, the people that have withdrawn so far, the 20 uh, for all that uh, Ethereum that has gone out, right now, the amount of ETH of when people actually deposited that into the beacon chain, again, in late 2020, you're looking at a price of around between, I mean, from that, that, that first time frame, from 3,000 to 3,100 is a pretty large amount of ETH, almost uh, around 120 million worth of it. And the next price target is 3,500. What does that mean? That means me personally, if I don't hit these numbers, I'm not a big fan of selling for a loss. So maybe it might behoove somebody to just wait for that price. So that's why I think we have a little ways to run before the Ethereum price maxes out. Now, it's anybody's guess what's going to happen in the next uh, day, week, months ahead. I know that the Fed has already talked about a pending uh, soft recession. But for me, I see this as very positive news for Ethereum holders, and I will continue to dollar cost average for quite some time. That is what I am doing, not financial advice. Speaking of which, if you would like to get a little bit more uh, depth and insights, uh, it was me, Guy from Coin Bureau, and Ben from the Cryptoverse. We went a little bit deeper into the East Shanghai Bitcoin cash rate in US and Asia markets. I will link uh, that video in the description. You can check it out. A lot of good information, great stuff. So that is the first part for Ethereum. Now let's take a look at is inflation dead? This is Steve Hankey. And he is an economics professor at John Hopkins University. He was on the David Lynn Report. Fantastic channel. I definitely recommend you check that out. And he is pretty much has been saying that inflation is on death's door. And this has pretty much been confirmed. And just take a, a quick uh, overview of what he said. I will link this video in the description so you can watch it. But basically what he says is this, which is the same thing that Milton Friedman had said uh, Nobel Prize winning economist. He said, look, inflation, like we've talked about on this channel many times, is just, it's a consequence of the M2 money supply or just money supply, people printing money, right? Treasury does that. We got a lot of uh, money in circulation. And what happens? We have high inflation. And what he took a look at, it wasn't the billions of dollars, because we can see that over here when we've been printing like crazy here in the States. We'd love to do that. And, but what they took a look at is it wasn't the billions of dollars it was the percent change from one year ago. And you can see uh, just from this graph that yes, we have actually gone down from a year ago. Now we are still pretty high from what we used to do, but yes, uh, inflation is going down because guess what, surprise, surprise, we have less money in circulation as they take it out, as they do a little bit of what called Fed tightening or quantitative tightening. 
Also, we took a look at uh, the bank credit for all commercial banks. We can see that, yes, it is massively high. Banks doing what banks do, Federal Reserve lending. But if we just take a look again at what uh, Mr. Hankey was talking about, percent change from uh, one year ago, yes, it is down uh, as well, but it is still high in billions of dollars. So that is just the one aspect. Also, we know that uh, if we take a look at this is from Trueflation, and what they use is they use Chainlink, which is an oracle which pulls in data, uh, real-time data. And they've been saying for a, a long time that uh, inflation in America is actually going quite is down quite precipitously. And we're going to see that uh, over here we, we pretty much hit our peak at a, almost 12% on June 18, 2022, and it's just been plummeting ever since. Now it's time for the Fed to catch up. So that is just that part on top of the fact that we just got the producer price index data in. And the producer price in, in, index it is the precursor for the consumer price index. PPI is a selling price received by domestic producers for their output. And guess what? PPI is in decline half a percent in March. Goods fall 1%. Services decrease by 0.3%. And this is actually echoed by uh, Jim Bianco, great uh, 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 analyst where he talks again on Bloomberg that, look, uh, we've got these, uh, these uh, rates. Inflation is going down. The real question is not so much about the, the rates themselves, but how long will the Fed continue higher for longer? He didn't say anything about cuts. That's pretty interesting. I will link this video also in the description. It's uh, very quick, about a minute or so. But he's like, he agrees essentially uh, with Hanky that, uh, yes, inflation is knocking on death's door. Is that true? Well, time, time will tell. But I think there's a lot of good positive aspects and maybe 2024 could be a pretty good year. And then also just to, uh, to finish up a couple of uh, notes of, uh, of news that's happened. Twitter, owned by Elon Musk, just partnered with eToro. Now, if you see this headline, you think to yourself, well, that's pretty big, Rob. Well, in actuality, no, it is not. What this is going to allow, starting Thursday, that day, a new feature will be rolled on the Twitter app. It will allow users to view market charts on an expanded range of financial instruments and buy and sell stocks and other assets from eToro. Ooh. And the statement is you'll be able to click a button that says view on eToro, which takes you through the eToro site and then buy and sell assets on this platform. Look, this is not a big deal, uh, quite honestly. It's not going to allow you to, to purchase it through Twitter. You're probably going to have to go through eToro. You're probably going to have to go through KYC and AML. And you know what? Twitter will probably get a referral fee. Is that wrong? I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying that's what it is. But I know some people are going to talk about this and go, that is the greatest story of all time. I don't really see it pushing adoption a a anywhere further. It's just going to funnel people to eToro. Let me know where I'm wrong. But uh, I think they could have done better on that one. And then lastly, um, this is interesting, actually. Uh, Solana is putting out their new Solana phone. And I had signed up for this to get notifications. I put a uh, deposit down. Now it's for $1,000. One thing to note about this, this Web3 phone, it's built on Android, Android 13. And I'm curious to see how this actually works and how it's better than any Android phone out there. I'm really curious to see if this is gonna be something marvelous or just a massive dud. So I will probably look into that and probably might pick it up and see what it's all about. But uh, that is it for the news. And lastly, I want to just share with you, there was an interview uh, that I did. This is with uh, Tyler Spaulding. You know Tyler Spaulding? He is the uh, founder of AMP, uh, the cryptocurrency, and then Flexa for payments processing and Ampera. And these three products combined, I think are gonna change a lot of different things. Now, Tyler, uh, interesting guy. He is, of course, the founder. He was also an MIT alum. He's also helped with NASA and the Mars, Mars mission. And he's also a whiskey maximalist. So smart guy, smart information. And I'm going to have you take a listen to what these three things are and how things are progressing. And then we'll come back. So just take a listen. This interview is about nine minutes. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I'd love to talk about those things pretty much any time. <laughs> so like... Uh, so yeah, currently um, I'm exclusively focused on Ampera, which is a new uh, collateral protocol um, that'll be, uh, hopefully people have, have used or will be launching some of the other features soon. Um, Flexa is the largest digital payments network, pure digital payments network in the world um, that lots of people are now using to uh, spend crypto um, in, in real life at real, you know, large stores um, all around 
um, the U.S. Uh, and mm -hmm. other countries. And so uh, AMP is a token that's used as collateral within uh, the Flexa network. Um, and that's really a way just to, to allow the network to work without any sort of risk. And there's a real, that's in, in payments, having a payment actually go through, depending on where it's coming from, all the conditions of clearing it is so much more complicated than anyone will even care to understand, or quite frankly, you don't want to understand. And so right. making a payment, there's so much risk involved in that. And so um, Flexa, you know, the team behind that, as you know, decades of experience in payments, understood some of the real complexities around how you would integrate within a point of sale, um, what other sort of assets then could be used, um, how do you um, sort of make this seamless uh, with the existing hardware and software, no changes, nothing else new for a merchant, right? Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's just not going to work. It needs to be table stakes of straightforward, as absolutely easy as possible. And so that's what Flexa is basically um, delivered. Um, and we've been so incredibly proud uh, of how that has worked. And then now on the Ampera side, um, in understanding how to expand, um, you know, payments, digital payments, and even more generally a payment or sort of a digital transaction more broadly, mm -hmm. we created Ampera, which I, I now uh, exclusively focus on as a separate organization, um, a new foundation set up building a DeFi primitive uh, from the ground up um, that's just really, really simple around how you can lock collateral and create letters of credit that then you can use in any sort of transaction. And we would hope that in the future, uh, Flexo would start using that as well as a way to now grow their network even faster than before, because it's something we think that is so powerful um, as just you know a separate protocol um, that's more extensible to different types of apps and smart contracts and you know having so many more wide uses, um, making payments better and then anything else that's sort of related as well. Gotcha. So then just, just real quick. So Flexa, I'd like this app because um, I have to pay transaction fees. Stripe, PayPal, whatever you want to use, you're looking at between 1.9 and 2.98% plus 30 cents per transaction fee. So you can use something like this where it integrates a bunch of different cryptos and then they can just pick the plethora of ones that they want to use, put it into the payment and I get paid in whatever I want to be paid in. Exactly. So I, 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 I like this whole part. I like AMP. I like Ampera, but I really should ask the big question, which is this. Tyler, who are you besides the co-founder of Flexa? Where do you come from and why are you a whiskey maximalist? Which I do, I got to tell you, I appreciate that on your bio. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm actually not uh, a bear, as I guess many people um, uh, often suspect. I, I just love bears, um, all the different <laughs> types of them. Uh, you know, even just being able to visit and seeing them now in nature, that's just a totally side passion that if other people ever want to talk about, completely game for. But that's where that actually comes from. Uh, it is more meaningful. Um, but no, I'm just, uh, I've been a technologist now since, well, I started my first company, uh, an e-commerce company in 1996. Um, Ooh. then yeah, yeah. Right. It's you can't even really think about how long ago that was. Um, then another, um, uh, a, a CMS, um, company back in technologies for e-commerce started that company, um, worked as a hardware engineer. So I was a kind of a aerospace engineer by training. So I worked mm -hmm. at, um, NASA for a few years on the space shuttle program, oh, um, yeah. worked on the Mars crew module. I worked for the United Space Alliance. I worked for all different sorts of entities around just building really, um, really, really cool, uh, not only just vehicles and other products then for, you know, space exploration, transportation that I'm super, super passionate about. Um, then built a couple of other software companies uh, in personalization, relevance engines, then in payments, uh, and just kind of keep going with that. Um, and, and now I, I got in crypto um, uh, early 2011 um, So Shoot. and have never, never left. Um, in fact, have doubled down and quadrupled down in terms of time, money, building, everything since the very beginning. Um, and I realized that how significant this technology could start to become. And so in working now to build out Flexa, um, a, a, a large digital payments network, and now into uh, Ampera, sort of a more generalized protocol to enable, you know, products like Flexa and then hopefully considerably more beyond. Um, and gotcha. then I really love whiskey uh, in terms of just all of the various alcohols. I don't know why, but it's really the only one that I like. And so that is just, I have to be very straightforward. Uh, I don't drink wine or beer or any other types of spirits, but I will 
talk to you probably for days um, about whiskey, should anyone care. I've been to probably maybe the top 75, 80 distilleries globally, um, been there, toured there, have, you know, exclusive bottles from there, been a collector for more than 20 years. Um, so I have more than a thousand bottles um, of whiskey. Um, it's, yeah, it's, I would say it's a passion. Um, a lot of people, you know, my wife calls it a problem, um, but that's, <laughs> It's always a matter of interpretation, right? Like perspective. <laughs> That's exactly right. You sound actually you sound just like my brother. He's a little big whiskey drinker himself. So, so Tyler, just real quick. So, so I mean, because I know you're a busy guy to get out of here, but there's been a couple of questions. Of course, when I I said I was going to interview you, I got a bombard a plethora of questions. <laughs> Here's one from Amp, dude. Uh, when big box retailers, when big banks want anything, and then also there's one. There's a couple from Danny D. When's the white paper for Tampera? And they're going to do testing. So what can they expect? So just a couple of questions for you before we get out of here. Sure. The, to the first one, um, it's something that, again, you know, the large, a large merchants or the players will you know, dictate their schedules and how they're participating in this greater ecosystem. Mm-hmm. I think um, a lot of uh, 2022 is very challenging, as I think anyone could uh, appreciate, of what had gone on in terms of some of the, the clarity or the enthusiasm or just how can this be really meaningful to a business um, where you look at certain assets that maybe didn't survive, right? That might have been very interesting um, as a payment asset, right? So all of that sort of uh, dust is starting to settle, I think, uh, in terms of not only like legal clarity, but then how some of the stuff can be used and where some of the benefits can really be realized. So it is absolutely impossible for the timeline but it is one of those things that's getting more and more inevitable in my opinion that these merchants will be starting to accept these sorts of payments um natively um much sooner than i think people expect um you know and i and i also hope that flexa is a major part of that uh going forward and that's what flexa has built and has been working with large merchants from the very beginning to facilitate that and you know i i Still believe that's the best product out there by a very very large margin and working closely with merchants to deliver that so so yeah that's one of those things that's just so hard to really you know you know put any sort of a timeline to because it's you know not just one entity but um it sure does look uh very interesting and promising i would say gotcha uh, and then uh i guess those other questions on uh on impera white paper product testing um, that is all, I'd say everything is probably 80 to 90% done. Um, all the smart contracts have been done, but now you're in the phase of, uh, you know, full, full auditing, getting other people to really hammer on things, making sure it's, again, we, we care so much about the security of the assets and not losing anything. And so, and the functionality, it's so critical. So we're going through all this testing and then when it's now ready for, you know, public to be used we'll put everything out there so the white paper will be in conjunction with that we don't want to be this all these things could potentially come someday right we really want to put it all out together here's exactly how it all works here's all the information all open source and really kind of put everything as the package rather than trying to lead into and and insinuate various things we're like no this is this is it it's a real functional thing all live people can use that and like that's what we're we're looking towards got it all right well that was a great summary thank you so much so like what we're going to do is that uh, we had a discussion beforehand and i'll be releasing little little pieces of that a lot of great info behind the scenes so tyler again thanks for coming on the show we appreciate just to understand what you know amp flex on amper actually is so we'll see you see you back here soon hopefully oh fantastic thanks for having me all right, so Tyler, thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it, it was very interesting. And I will just tell you guys some information, which is this, me and Tyler talked uh, for about an hour before that interview, fascinating stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slowly release those clips, the things that me and Tyler have talked about. And it was everything as far as maximalism, where Bitcoin is going, why they chose Ethereum, some other important pieces of information that I just couldn't squeeze in. And I'm just gonna just clip those out but it's pretty interesting. And I think it's a product to watch. Now, is that the product for you to buy and sell your house and kidneys and kids to get into? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's very interesting. Maybe you should do some more research on it and check to see if it's something for you. But that's it for today. So look, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Again, 
This is not a set it and forget it type of market. You really should be up to date with what's going on. So consider subscribing, it might help you out. Thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one.